Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today, I would like to discuss kind of the right notion of equivalence in algebraic topology, which is called uh, homotopy, homotopy equivalence, homotopic, whatever you want to call it. And it's 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 a, it's a slightly funny notion about the same be, something being the same shape. And I would like you to think about it like this. So. Um, Kind of the obvious notion you would come up with in topology of what it means to be equivalent, what we would be maybe some two spaces are homeomorphic. Homeomorphic is exactly what you think it is. Well, the right maps for to topological spaces are continuous maps, and in homeomorphism is a continuous map which is a bijection with a slight catch that you need to uh, impose that the inverse is also continuous. But let's forget that. Let's just let's just say an homeomorphism is just a continuous map, which is a bijection. That sounds like the right notion of equivalence in topological spaces. And in some sense, it is. So what I'm going to discuss today is a slightly weaker notion. And it's kind of the right notion for algebraic topology, because all um, examples you cook up in algebraic topology are invariants under this notion of homotopy or let's say most of them are, the most important ones are. Um, but geometrically speaking, it's a little bit weird, as we will see. It's still very intuitive, so don't worry, but it's a little bit weird and certainly weaker than homeomorphism. So what always confused me a lot is why on earth should you study homotopy? It's a slightly weird notion, and I hope to make this a little bit clearer today. But keep in mind that it's not like for vector spaces, uh, where the obvious notion of equivalence is just a linear map, which is an isomorph, which is, well, a bijection on the sets. In topology, it's, it's more subtle. It's not super obvious what the right notion of equivalence is. There are different words. For example, isotopy is another one, or planar isotopy would be another one that you could use um, for, as a notion of equivalence. It, it really depends on the problem we want to study. So don't get con too confused. Um, I got very confused. So homeomorphic might not be the right notion and in algebraic topology it usually is not. But what I will call, or what is called homotopy equivalent is the right notion. And it all comes down to this, well, to this example, which is the first example in the book of Hatcher, which is linked in the description, which I, I really love and I, I would really would like you to have a look at it, is um, kind of the equivalence classes of the Latin alphabet. So here I have a letter A, here I have my letter B, and here I have obviously my letter C. And I like to think of them as, as fattened letters. So my letter C secretly is actually a fattened letter, something like that. So it's the, the, my space is just the, the whole thing, right? But in some sense, there's too much information in that space. And that will be exactly what will well, be the definition in the end of an homotopy equivalence. So this space has kind of a spine. Um, should use a different color, maybe black. So it's kind of a spine, as you can see upstairs. And there is kind of a, a continuous deformation, a squeezing of the letter C that you see here. So all of these arrows are kind of squeezing, squeezing maps that squeeze the letter C down to that spine. And kind of what we want is we want then to kind of um, uh, sort the the, the Latin alphabet into a genus zero part, into a genus one part, and into a genus two part, by just counting the holes in the symbols. So my type B, uh, so my type B, <laughs> my letter B has two holes, so I call it of genus two. Um, my letter A has one hole, so maybe it's easier to see the hole if I draw it like this. So here's, here's the hole, and yeah, so, and then you count genus one just means one whole and you will realize that the letters A, D, O, P, Q, and R have one whole. Uh, the letter B is the only one with, of genus two, is the only one with two holes and everything else like C, they don't really have any holes. And kind of the idea, the whole idea of homotopy is to make this precise, the underlying, how to make this precise by just counting holes. So basically what I did is I, I took my letter C, A, B, C, whatever, I sh shrink it to a kind of spine, right? I could draw my letter B either as a thick, like here, or as a 
or thin like here, I shrink it to the spine, and then I kind of count the holes that I see in the spine. Right, so we would like to make this notion precise. And everything comes from a very, well, to make it precise, we have a look at a very, very classical notion you see in algebra usually, uh, which is either called an idempotent or a projection. And kind of the idea of a projection is always that you have kind of an, um, so this one here, so it projects onto its image, which means it's kind of the identity on the image. And as a formulation of an idempotent will be, or would be just, um, it's a map from X to itself, which squares to the identity. So we just do the same thing and just in a topological setup, which means R, which is called a retraction, is a, map, a continuous map from a topological space to itself, which squares to the identity, right? So the only difference to the usual notion in algebra is that I add the adjectives continuous and I would like it to be between the topological space and well, the endomorphism of a topological space. And it has this nice property that, well, it fixes a certain subspace. In the certain subspace, this will be this, this will be A and this will be X, the outside one. Uh, same here, this will be A. There's a thick one in the middle and this will be X. Again, those pictures are stolen from Hatcher. So this is A and this is X. Okay. Um, turns out that the notion of a retraction is a bit too weak for the purposes of algebraic topology. For example, every space uh, which is not empty is uh, has a retraction to to a point by just sending everything to a point, to a certain point. That's a bit too strong. Um, so the correct notion we would use here is the notion of a deformation retraction. And it, it's the following. It's a continuous family. So you have, con you have a, uh, of course it's continuous, but it's a continuous family. So you have a deformation parameter, which is, you should think of it like time. It's, it's this flow here that def deforms the big space onto the uh, small space this time parameter, and you have this family of maps, these HTs, still from X to X. They start at the identity, so they do nothing, right? It just sends X to itself. So it's just the outside picture. Uh, so they start here, and then they do some continuous deformation and they end here. So this is H of zero, or the image of X under H of zero, and this is the Im image of X under H of one. And you want to, this to happen continuously. That's why we draw those funny lines here. So we really want to pull this point to here. You want to pull this point to here and so on. And that's what you call a deformation retraction, deformation retract, whatever. Um, so the, all of them are deformation. So the, the name for the space A in this case is deformation retract. So this space, as well as this space, as well as this space, they are all deformation retracts of um, this thing here with two holes, right? So the, the outside space. So um, these are two holes, be aware. So you can't contract the holes anymore. And yeah, kind of the, the slogan is in topology, everything should be continuous. So this process of um, retracting a space should happen continuously. And that's why you add this, this condition of having a family that continuously uh, changes one shape into the other. Um, note that this is a really, really weak property in some sense. I will come back to this in a second. For example, if I would just take a disk, then I could continuously contract it by just by just pulling it, right? By just taking the outside and, or the, 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 the boundary and squeeze it in, I can contract it continuously to a point. So um, there's, the point is deformation retraction of the disk, but the point is certainly not homeomorphic to the disk because it's already not by this process is already not a bijection on sets. So this is a kind of weak notion, and it's not completely obvious why you can't contract in some sense those spaces further, why you just can't get rid of the holes. But the whole point will be, of course, that, that you really can't. Okay, so these are really three, well, anyway, these are three deformation retracts of the same space. And that's kind of the equivalent that you would build. So you would say, um, and this is how I would write it, X is homotopy equivalent to Y if there exists the big space 
Z, which I will discuss in a second uh, in those examples, such that X and Y are deformation retracts of the same space. So, um, so my, there exists my big space Z. Uh, for example, this thing contracts to is, is homotopy equivalent, is homotopy equivalent to a circle. This is a homotopy equivalent to a figure eight. Figure eight is this one or this one, figure infinity or figure eight, whatever. This one is homotopy equivalent to a point. In this case, uh, the big space is actually the letter. So uh, because both of the shape itself is a deformation retract of itself, of course, and you can further deformation retract it to a point. So let's let's have a look at this one here to a point because now you can you have the spine and now you can pull the spine in by just fixing this point and just pulling it in. So this actually deformation retracts to a point. This deformation retracts by the very same idea to the figure eight, and this deformation retracts to a circle. Okay, in the example I had before, so the one below, the big space is Z, and um, let's say this is X and this is Y. So they are both deformation, this is Y, not Z, sorry. So they are both deformation retracts of the same space, so they are homotopy equivalent. And that might not be completely obvious because, well, this is the shape here, and this is the shape here, right? So, it's not quite clear why they should be the same, except that you're really counting holes that you see here. Um, this counting hole idea will only get us so far because sometimes counting holes is not as easy as it looks like. In this case, it kind of is, uh, but it's really good intuition. Just, just think of homotopy equivalence as counting holes, basically. Okay, let me give you a formal definition. Also because the one I just gave you is usually just equivalent. Uh, it's not a really good definition in some sense. You would establish it as a, a equivalent property to the real definition, whatever a real definition is. So uh, two spaces are um, homotopy equivalent if and only if whatever I just said applies. Um, so they are homeomorphic to deformation retract of a big space Z, but the formal definition is written up here. So you would first define what it means for two maps to be um, homotopic. And then you could define what it means for two spaces to be homotopic. And because that confused me always a lot, I decided in this video to go with this definition, which is kind of an equivalent statement, right? In some sense, it's not a really good definition. It's more like a property, um, but I, I think it's more intuitive than uh, the, the actual definition that you usually read in textbooks or also on Wikipedia, for example. Linked, of course, in the description together with extra resources. Um, so let's discuss this at least for a second. So it's the same idea. So you have this continuous family such that if you start at zero, you see your first map. And if you add one, you see your second map and everything happens in a continuous way. Then you would call two maps homotopy equivalent. And what we have just seen is, well, in this retraction formulation, who is a projection, in this case is just boils down to the following. So two spaces are homotopy equivalent. I write the same symbol either for spaces or for maps. If there is a map in one direction and there is a map in the other direction, such that the maps are homotopic to the identity on the corresponding space. Okay. Um, Again, this might look a little bit counterintuitive, but it's it's really it's it's really this idea that they are kind of a deformation retract of the same space, which um, makes a little bit more sense to me at least. And this is kind of the correct notion in algebraic topology, but if you want to consider equivalence, because everything you kind of study in algebraic topology is an invariant under um, under those notions, under those notion of homotopy. So uh, homology in cohomology or homotopy groups, for example. So this is kind of the notion we will run, we will use most of the time for equivalence. Um, however, let me stress again that this is, this is a really weak notion. A lot of things are equivalent that you don't think should be equivalent or that you don't think would be equivalent. 
For example, I personally think that the Mobius strip. So uh, if you have never seen the Mobius strip, link in the description, Wikipedia article is, is, is awesome. Um, so the Mobius strip is homotopic to a circle. You, you can see it here in this picture, which I of course stole from Hatcher. But it, it, it's not homeomorphic to a circle. And in some sense, it shouldn't be a circle because it has this funny twist and it's what is called a non-orientable surface. So here is this funny twist. So you take, basically you, you take a strip of paper, you twist it once, and then you glue the ends together. And that's the Mobius strip. Uh, while the usual circle would be just you glue the ends together. Um, yeah, anyway, so they are home homotopic because they, they both kind of uh, deformation retract to, uh, to a circle, but they are not homeomorphic. So in some sense, homotopic might not be the right notion to consider. Just be careful, just be careful. There is no obviously correct notion um, of equivalence in topology. So uh, in some sense, you want to distinguish them. This notion, I say again, this notion of homotopy will not distinguish them. Uh, very similar, there's this funny example of the, a very famous one of the house with two rooms, which is actually homotopy equivalent to a point. And that's far from obvious. I link a very nice blog uh, post about it, it describes very carefully how you can deformation retract this thing to a point, which is pretty amazing. Um, the whole point will be, so I, if, if you look at it, the whole point will be that this is absolutely not obvious. So it's actually not so easy sometimes to tell whether two spaces are homotopy equivalent because it's kind of such a weak notion. Okay, but to let to wrap up, um, so homotopy equivalence is this funny notion of having a deformation retract, this idea of having deformation retracts, you kind of continuously deform a space into the other. Um, and it is a very weak notion of equivalence. So a lot of things will be equivalent that you don't expect to be equivalent. Or if you're like me, you wouldn't expect them to be equivalent. But it's still kind of the right notion you want to consider in algebraic topology because all of the standard constructions in algebraic topology or most of the standard construction in algebraic topology are invariants under homotopy equivalence, um, which by the way implies that they're invariants under homeomorphism because homeomorphic, two spaces being homeomorphic is a stronger property than two spaces being homotopic. So for if you have a homeomorph, homeomorphism, then the, inver, the inverse is actually kind of the inverse homotopy. Anyway, I'm already starting raffling. So let me say it again. Um, it might not be the completely intuitive notion of equivalence. It's a squeezing notion, continuous squeezing things. Um, but it's certainly the right notion for uh, algebraic topology, for the purposes of algebraic topology, or maybe I shouldn't say certainly, it's certainly the right notion for this video lecture series about algebraic topology. So that's what I usually will consider. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.